Are the Knicks contenders or pretenders? That's what we're going to talk about today on the Bleacher Report app. Salute to Knicks Nation out there. Happy Tuesday afternoon. CP, the franchise here of Knicks Fan TV. That's what we're going to talk about today, man. The red hot New York Knicks are capturing the attention of the NBA. They are putting some respect on our name. But is it real? Let's talk about it, man. So I'm going to wait for some of the people to uh, to jump in here in the chat. And while we do that, this New York Knicks team is red hot. As I said, nine game winning streak, 39 and 27 on the campaign. Fifth in the East could have been a little bit closer to fourth had Grant Williams made his free throws last night as he told Donovan Mitchell that he would. But uh, a couple of bricks there, and the Cavaliers beat the Celtics in overtime. So those Celtics are reeling. We don't know if they're for real, but we'll save that for another show. But back to these Knicks, man. Nine-game winning streak. Over that span, they've been number one in the NBA net rating. Number two in offensive rating. Number three in effective field goal percentage. Ninth in defense. This team has been for real, man. This team has absolutely been for real. It's been led by their two All-Stars, and I call Jalen Brunson an All-Star. He was snubbed. He was disrespected, but certainly playing at an All-Star level. Julius Randle as well. You look at the rotation changes that Tom Thibodeau made back in uh, December 4th when the team was 10-13. and Thibodeau hits the panic button, goes his way, and it's paid dividends. You look at the Josh Hart acquisition, what's that's done for this Nick Bench. And how about Emmanuel Quickly? Emmanuel Quickly's brilliance as of late has been nothing short of spectacular. In that game against the Celtics in which in which the Knicks won 131 to 129 in double overtime, you had three all-stars on the court. You had Julius Randle, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum on the court, and it was Emmanuel Quickly who was without question the best player on both teams with a career-high 39 points, eight rebounds, seven assists. Emmanuel Quickly was, was absolutely outstanding, man, and now he – is putting his name in the hat, the leader for the NBA Sixth Man of the Year award. He's gone up in almost every sports book, leading the pack and leading over the Celtics Sixth Man, Malcolm Brogdon. So we'll see how that race shapes out with the final 15 to 16 games left. But no, nevertheless, man, these Knicks are running on all cylinders man shout out to jj diaz 11 in the chat says man this has been a great two weeks to be a knicks fan no question shout out to jj billy navy says uh as a lifetime knicks fan i want to get excited for the current state of the team i know there's still reservation amongst the fans listen it's true knicks fans have gone through the trauma they've gone through a ptsd man it's not easy being us we've seen a lot of the heartbreak we've seen a lot of the, the the boneheaded plays, the crunch time errors, the heartache of the playoffs. We've seen it. But I think this team is a little bit different, man. I, I think they are a little bit different. And right now, this team is looking at one and a half games out of the fourth spot. This was a team that Vegas and a lot of prognosticators penciled in at 39 wins for the whole season, for all 82. They're at 39 wins with 16 games left. So they should be able to surpass that. I had them at about 41 wins. So they're getting closer to my number as well. But I certainly didn't see this coming. This team is leaps and bounds better than the team that came out and started the season in October. Brunson going off. Randall, outstanding. You know, Julius Randall's heroics in Miami, winning in that game with a last second shot. In crunch time, he's won the Eastern Conference Player of the Week, so we'll put some respect on his name. As I talked about with Quickly in his Sixth Man of the Year candidacy, Mitchell Robinson coming back certainly allows this team to accentuate on their strengths, which is getting after it on the offensive glass, leading the league or at the top of the league in second-chance points. The impact that Mitch has on this team as far as a defensive rim presence rim protector the way that he he has his defense gelling in the pick and roll is pick and roll coverage this is a different team shout out to mp 1010 mp how you feeling 
Ryan the Stud said, dudes on BR. Wow, he's making it. CP the franchise is everywhere, man. We everywhere. But shout out to Bleach Report for having me back once again. We had a great time during the uh, the trade deadline discussions. And we'll be back each Tuesday of this month talking Knicks, the red hot New York Knicks, one of the best teams in basketball. No question about it. Cesar Lee. Oh, Cesar Leo says, CP, what up, bro? I see you. Cesar Leo, how you feeling, man? How are you feeling? So there's a lot to like about this team. And the power rankings as of late, a lot of these power rankings, you look at NBA.com, you look at The Athletic, they have the Knicks at fifth place in the power rankings. So this this Knicks team is not just a top 10 team. They are arguably a top five team in the league. They've now beaten the Celtics uh, three out of four games this season. Now, my producer, Asia, is not so happy about that, but that is a fact. They're starting to beat a lot of the upper echelon teams in this league, and they're competing. They are absolutely competing. I mean, number two in offensive rating over these nine games. This next team, they are scoring at a wild clip. They're shooting the ball efficiently. Their three ball numbers are on an uptick, and that's a positive sign. It's a positive sign for a team who, over the last four years, has not been a good offensive team, has not ranked near the top of the league in offense. So they are certainly trending in the right direction. Now, Piccolo692, I I love this question because he says regular season games and playoff games are totally different. It's a half-court game, but can the Knicks execute? That is going to be the key question as it goes into the playoffs. He's absolutely right. And Piccolo, we, we go back from the Knicks fan TV days. Shout out to Piccolo. Absolutely right. Can they execute in the half court? Can they make the proper decisions in the half court? That will be the key there because the game is going to slow down. You're not going to have as many half court opportunity. I mean, uh, fast break opportunities. So things are going to slow down. You're going to have to execute in the half court. Now, the Knicks this season where they have been better than than previous years is that um, they have been a pretty decent half-court team. They've been a pretty decent half-court team in the league, and I believe I'm just pulling up the stats right now. And uh, we, we should have we pulled up the share screen, Asia, but for now, uh, the Knicks are third in the league in points per possession in the half-court. 13 in points per play. Now, a lot of that is their ability to get on the offensive glass. And number two, they're, they're ranked second in the league in offensive rebounding percentage in the half court at 31.6%. They also get a lot of putbacks, third in the league in terms of the putback category. So, uh, yes, a lot of those opportunities come on second chance points and their ability to correct their mistakes or to capitalize on those missed shots. Some of that is Mitchell Robinson, but Mitchell Robinson has missed a good portion of not a good portion, but he's missed some time this season. So even without him, the Knicks have still been able to maintain that edge near the top of the league in terms of offensive rebounding percentage and getting themselves second chance opportunities. So they haven't had to be that efficient in terms of shooting because um, through their effort, through their hard work, their hustle, they're able to get those chances back. Now, as Piccolo said, will those opportunities be there in the playoffs? Will those opportunities be there in the playoffs? Because it's almost similar to how that Memphis offense was last year. Yes, they had John Morant. He was their their engine, but they were at the top of the league in offensive rebounding percentage. They got after it in transition, and a lot of that made up for the bulk of their offense. So it's going to be left to be seen with the Knicks. Can they get that done in the half court? Now, Dennis in the chat says, I think we're one of the deepest teams in the league, definitely in the East. Yes, I believe so. With that Josh Hart acquisition, with Emmanuel quickly playing like the guy that we expected to to have when we drafted him. Quickly in year three, he's playing in that, if he's playing as that guy. And development isn't linear. A lot of people say it takes some time for, for draft prospects to develop. Usually by year three, year four, you have a, a fairly good idea of what this guy is going to look like and and quickly he's arrived man he has arrived 18 points per game and three threes made over this nine game stretch 
he is playing solid, solid basketball. And so the depth has improved off of this bench. Quickly and hard as a, as a one-two punch offensively and defensively off the bench are going to give opposing teams problems. The way that they get after it defensively, you have Josh Hart. He can be a one-man fast break. He can play make. He rebounds the ball well. That's solid. Now, you need Obi Toppin to continue to step up. He's going to be – they're going to have him planted in the corner three for the most part. So you want to see him knock that down. And also, can he put the ball on the floor? Isaiah Hartenstein, he's kind of fell off a little bit, but over that the the majority of the nine game winning streak, he's played well as well off the bench. So uh, the bench is is looking deep with that nine man rotation, and we'll see if they can continue to build on it. We'll see if they continue to build on it. And when you look at this team, I talked about Brunson and Randall's brilliance. They score the ball efficiently right now. Getting after it in second chance points. The the uh, the bench unit, the improvements on the bench. Josh Hart trade tremendous. How about clutch? When you look at what Jalen Brunson has given to this team as a dependable, reliable decision maker and scorer in crunch time situations, only trailing De'Aaron Fox in the league for most clutch points, and the league defines clutch as. When the game is with five minutes, within five minutes or less, and the score is within five points or less. So Brunson's been clutch. And then we've seen in, in those crunch time scenarios, they will go with a Brunson, but I think you'll also see more quickly and heart in those closing scenarios over a uh, Quentin Grimes and even an RJ Barrett. Our number three pick, I think Thibodeau is going to go there. He's, I think he's very, very high. We know he's high on Josh Hart, and he's very high in Emmanuel quickly. You can expect those two guys to log a lot of closing time minutes in the fourth quarter because they're going to give you defense, tenacity on the defensive end, playmaking ability, with quickly being able to shoot the ball as efficiently as he has right now. I think he has earned closing minutes. And Josh Hart, even Josh Hart is shooting the ball very well. He's shooting damn near 60% from three. Now, that's not going to be sustainable, but he's still shooting the ball very well. Now, Vin D95 in the chat says, weed hitting y'all hard if you think the Knicks are contenders. So Vin is not a believer, but that's okay because there are reasons to believe that this team is a legit team in the NBA and deserves respect. This is not the team that the league saw two years ago when they made the playoffs. Julius Randle had an outstanding year. Most improved player, second team All-NBA, made the All-Star team. Some people thought it was an outlier. Some people thought it was no fans in the stands. He's now proving those people wrong this year. But that was a different team. Julius Randle had to be everything for that team. The scorer, the rebounder, and the playmaker doesn't have to do that this year. He has not just a capable scorer, and playmaker on this team. He's got an elite shot creator in Jalen Brunson next to him in that starting five. A guy in Jalen Brunson who helped lead his team to the Western Conference Finals last year in in, in a lot of those games without Luka Doncic. That is big. And as I said, a guy that can close games. It's a little bit different. The Knicks didn't have that two years ago. They had Derrick Rose, but Rose was more of a, a bench spark and a closing piece. That wasn't sustainable. In Brunson, you have a a younger, elite shot creator, and that's going to help this team. I talked about Quickly's brilliance. Now, you don't have Quickly, who was a rookie two years ago in that playoff run, who who looked like a fish out of water. Quickly knows his – there's nobody on this team that knows their role more than Emmanuel Quickly. So he's going to add that element to the bench. We talked about Hart. So this is a different team. That team two years ago was was very reliant on Julius Randle, and if he didn't have it, the Hawks were able to expose the Knicks because no one else was able to create for themselves, and no one else was really hitting much shots. You know, Knicks that year, two years ago, had a couple of guys that were shooting the ball for 40% from three, Alec Burks, Reggie Bullock. RJ was shooting close to that. When it came to the playoffs, they were nowhere to be found. So the team was a very one-dimensional team. By the way, you also did not have Mitchell Robinson in that series against the Hawks. So you tack on experience, the talent level is better, and knock on wood, they go into this playoff healthy 
it's a vastly different team than what you saw two years ago. There are certainly going to be questions. As Piccolo in the chat said, like, how do they execute in the half court? That'll be a question. What do they do when, what does Randall and Brunson do when they see the double teams or they see the extra defender shadowing, waiting for them to, to, to crash into the paint? Will they make those proper decisions to make their teammates better? And will their teammates reward them by being able to knock down shots? This is where we need Quentin Grimes has got to be more consistent in, with his shooting. He's got to get more opportunities, but he's got to knock down those jumpers. R.J. Barrett has got to be more efficient with his catch-and-shoot um, opportunities. And with R.J. Barrett, Knicks are going to have to figure out what we, what we saw in that Celtics game with R.J. Barrett scoring 29-11. and 11 pretty much overshadowed by Emmanuel Quickly's brilliance and Julius Randle as well. But we saw that without Jalen Brunson, R.J. Barrett was more comfortable being the guy in that offense to generate offense for himself. Seems like when the three of those guys are on the court together, he's a little bit stuck. He won't get the ball as much, and he's a little bit less impactful. Now, the Knicks have staggered those lineups to have R.J. Barrett coming off the bench with quickly and Hart and Hartenstein and Obi, but he he still is trying to find himself there. So I think that's going to be a key, especially when they go into the playoffs. Will RJ find his groove in these closing 16 games and into the playoffs? Battle tested in the chat said RJ is the key to making a run. I think he definitely is. I think he is. So that those supporting cast members, RJ and Grimes in particular, have got to be able to bail out Brunson and Randall when they get into trouble. We saw in the Boston game just a couple nights ago when Randall turns the ball, when, when he makes that spin move, when he turns his back, the memo is out on him. Send another defender at him, force him into making a bad decision. Celtics were able to capitalize on that about three times. So Randall's got to clean that up. The Knicks have got to put him in a position to succeed, to make less mistakes, and to play make for his teammates. So, so it's a little on Randall, it's a little on, the, on, on, on Tibbs and his scheme. But they got to watch that because that is Julius's weakness. T. Holloway in the chat says, facts, RJ's still young and he will develop into a top player in this league. I'm sold on him. We shouldn't be giving up on him. Yeah, a lot of Knicks fans were, were sour on RJ this year. They want to give up on him, but... As I said earlier in the show, the pre- development is not linear. The development is not linear. So there could be a lot of things that have contributed to RJ not having the year that fans have expected. Maybe it's the brunch of the acquisition. He's still trying to acclimate himself and figure out his role. Maybe, maybe he got a little bit too complacent. He got the bag for years, $120 million. Maybe he got a little too complacent. And he's got to get back into the lab, get back into the gym with Drew Hanlon and and get hungry again. We'll see. We shall see. So I'm not so ready to, 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 to bail on RJ just yet. I would say let's have some patience with him. Mano in the chat says, the fact that we beat Boston twice means we can fight in a seven game series. Well, you would hope so. But the regular season and the playoffs are two different things. The game slows down. The teams are playing harder. The film is out on you. Most of these coaches now have three or four games of film on you. And they're going to try to take away the things that you do best and force you to beat them in other ways. And it's a series. So it's not just the best team on a given night. It's can you beat this team four out of seven? It is a series. And that's why the NBA typically, typically, the better team wins because it's a series. Now, it's not all the time. Some teams just get hot. But typically, it's a better team. So we'll we'll have to see. I don't get so high on on regular season. Look, two years ago, the Knicks dominated the Hawks during the regular season. Julius Randle dominated the Hawks during the regular season. And in the playoffs, they got embarrassed. So I wouldn't get so high on regular season records because in the playoffs, things change. And that's where coaches make their money. That's where coaches make their money. 
R Hoops 295 in chat says, R's and Knicks for real is water wet. Nine in a row, Brunson Randall playing at an all-NBA level. Beach is the best rebounder. I think it means Mitchell Robinson. Best rebounder in the league and IQ off the bench. Stop. We have been for real. All right, so he jumped out the window. He's all the way out there. That's okay. That is okay. You, you can, you, you're entitled to that opinion, sir. Why not? They, they've certainly earned that because they play an outstanding ball. Look at, look at what they did last week. Last week was one of their biggest tests that I could think of in, in a long time watching this team. They faced the Celtics twice, the leaders of the East. Very difficult to beat a team twice in one week. They made quick work out of them and to, to start off the week. Came back from 14 down on the road without their best player and were able to win that game. That says a lot about not just the talent level, but their persistence, their determination, their grit and grind. They can get it done in a multitude of ways. Then they had a test against two teams who... They are pretty much neck and neck within in this playoff race in the Miami Heat and the and the Brooklyn Nets. They were able to make quick work out in the Nets, no problem. I think the Nets are going to continue to slide. And against the Heat, on the road, again, a team that you want to win that tiebreaker against, you now they're now up two games on the Heat. And they're able to come back and win that game behind Julius Randle's heroics. So this week was a big week. Last week was a big week, and they came out on top 4-0. So you got to put some respect on their name. Because they are playing as good as basketball as anybody. Shea, 1424, said Knicks have a legit big three. Brunson, Randall, and Barrett. Knicks cannot be ignored. I think RJ needs to uh, needs a little bit of time to, to, to really be a big piece of that big three. Again, they're still trying to f- figure out where he fits in best in this whole equation i always look at his minutes with that second unit as an opportunity for him to really establish himself both as a scorer and a playmaker it's been a little bit up and down now we saw against the celtics without brunson he was able to be a little bit more aggressive and do his thing so where where is that balance for rj we'll have to wait and see black magic says strength in numbers no no doubt about it we got Vin D's comment. Jex4212 says, uh, I feel like Obi's still trying to find his places on the team, his place on the team. Yeah, I think so. It, it, it's it's tough. <laughs> Here you are in a fit in, in a in a double overtime game against the Celtics. 58 minutes of basketball, and Obi Toppin finds 11 minutes. His average. It's not easy, man. Not easy. But he's he's got to take advantage of the minutes that he's given. Whether that's shooting the ball, put the ball on the floor, man. Get aggressive, attack the basket. That's one thing you want to see Obi Toppin be able to do consistently that he's he's still kind of unsure of himself with. Have some confidence, attack the basket, and and, and be confident that you can make a play. Those are the type of players, especially at home in the playoffs, that you're going to rely on. It's your number six, your number seven, your number eight guy in that nine-man rotation. You expect those guys to step up and play well. So as we look at the um, as we look at the standings and and Abraham twenty in the chat says six man of the year what do I think IQ will fall in six man of the year standings I still think he'll fall a little bit behind Brogdon <clears throat> even though it quickly is the favorite right now I think he'll still fall behind Brogdon now a couple of things in quickly's favor and a lot of the advanced metrics quickly is ahead of Brogdon. Also, what's, what could be in Quickly's favor is durability. That's one thing that Malcolm Brogdon has not been throughout his entire career is durable. He just missed some time with the Celtics with a sore ankle. He came back last night against the Cavaliers. So we'll see. Will, will the Celtics look to rest him as they try to make their extended playoff push? Can he remain durable? That could help Quickly in this thing. But I also think... Uh, can quickly maintain his scoring punch to close this thing out. If he can, I think he'll have a good chance. 
I think you I think you'll still have a good chance. Now, as we look at the Eastern Conference standings, the Knicks right now 39-27 in fifth place, one and a half games behind the Cleveland Cavaliers. And those two teams will meet up for one last time in Cleveland on March 31st. So circle that date on your calendar. That is going to be a major, major game. Knicks have uh, 16 games left. Cavs have 15 games left. That is going to be a major, major um, game. And we'll see if the Knicks can, can get that fourth seed and earn home court in the first round. Because if they do that, and if they play the Cavs in that first round, I think they can upset the Cavs. I think they can beat the Cavs in that first round. Now, the question is, if they are going to be a true contender, the second round gets a little bit tricky. Because if the Milwaukee Bucks, this Bucks celtics race is also going to be telling. Because the Milwaukee Bucks are up <clears throat> on the Celtics for two games, two games ahead for first place in the East. Of those teams at the top of the East, the Celtics, the Bucks, the Sixers, I don't think the Knicks match up with the Bucks well at all. I don't like that matchup. I don't like it at all. They haven't beat the Bucks this year. The Bucks can meet beat the Knicks in terms of the size and physicality battle. And by the way, they got one of the best players in the sport in Giannis, who when he gets going, I'm not sure there's many people that can stop him. You add in Chris Middleton. You add in Drew Holiday's two-way brilliance. That's a very, very difficult matchup for the Knicks. A very difficult matchup. I don't like how they match up with them. And so let's say they beat, they let's say they see the Cavs in that 4-5 matchup and go on to win. They're coming out in the second round and they see the Bucs. Now, how do they match up with the Celtics? I do like it. And the Celtics are reeling as of as of this moment. Will the Celtics be able to find their mojo? Is left to be seen. We all know it's a high octane offense. It's one of the best three point shooting offenses in the league. And when you look at the next three point shooting defense, that can be questionable at times. How do they match up with Mitchell Robinson when they when they go small? How do they match up Mitchell Robinson if the Celtics so small? It's a, it's a tough matchup, but I think the Knicks match up a little bit better with the Celtics than they do with the Bucks. And so if they want to make some noise, they are going to, number one, need to win against it, against the Cavs if they, if they finish there, 4-5. or five. And then also uh, you got to hope that the Celtics get that number one seed back then you, you may have a chance at, uh, at making some noise in the East. But nevertheless, this is a formidable team that deserves the respect of the league. No question about it. And they are also two games up on the Nets. Nets are sitting in sixth. I think the Nets, the Nets will continue to slide. I think it's reasonable to expect that. And they're also four games up on the Heat with two games remaining. So the Knicks can continue to put the heat in the rear view mirror. If they're able to win those two games, but they got to run a little bit of a gauntlet right now out West after they play Charlotte tonight on the man, Charlotte team, no lamella ball, unless this is a trap game, the Knicks should be able to win this one going away. Then they head out West and I'm circling this matchup, man. I'm looking forward to this matchup between the Knicks and the Kings. Kings third in the West right now, having an outstanding season. Mike Brown, no question, Coach of the Year candidate. And it's not even because of their defense. It's their offense is so electric. When you look at their ability to run their offense through Sabonis or run it through Fox, their 1-2 game has been electric. You add on the wing scores that they have, whether it's Kevin Herter, Harrison Barnes is always steady. The rookie that that they uh, that they picked up last year in the draft. 
Davion Mitchell coming. You know, they, they got some guys. Kings got some guys, man. It's a nice team. I'm looking forward to that matchup. You know, Randall always takes that matchup with Sabonis quite personally. So then they got the Kings. Then back-to-backs at the Crypto.com Arena where they will see the Clippers on Saturday, Lakers on Sunday. Clippers beat the Knicks at home in Madison Square Garden in overtime. I think the Clippers are, even though they're kind of reeling themselves, they're trying to figure things out. They're still a tough matchup. Kawhi Leonard's playing as good as basketball as anybody in the league. You can tack on Paul George. Nicholas Batum, his versatility, what he can do if, if they want to go small. Um, Plumlee has been a nice upgrade for them. You had on Westbrook, Eric Gordon. It's a tougher matchup. Even though this Clipper team is trying to find themselves, I think they still are a deep team, and they're tough. they will be a tough matchup for the Knicks. And they're going to put a lot of pressure on the Knicks' wings, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Then you take on the Lakers with no, no, with no LeBron. We still have to contend with an Anthony Davis in the second night of a back-to-back. Lakers are different and a deeper team than they were before the trade deadline. So that won't be a walk in the park either. So they got some tough, tough matchups to deal with this week. Tough matchups to deal with this week. We'll have to check in on the health of Jalen Brunson. Will he play tonight? Will they continue to rest him? And by the way, what do you guys in the chat think about this whole load management dynamic? Should the Knicks be looking to rest some players as they make this push some of you guys have been saying yeah they need to rest randall they need to rest brunson go to the bench a little bit more i don't see tom Tebow doing that especially with the fourth seed in view i don't see tips going that route tibbs is tibbs i, I think i think he's gonna push it and he just hope that Julius Randle, who does want to play, he's he's not with the whole load management thing, but he has it been admittedly, uh, uh, as he said, fatigued, tired late in these games. The Heat game, the boss that the Celtics team goes into double OT, so that's going to be worth watching. How will Julius maintain throughout the season these final sixteen games, and will he have, be fresh? For the playoffs. Blood of the Panthers is Keegan Murray. Yes, that was, that was the guy in Sacramento I was talking about. Keegan Murray. So, load management has certainly been a question. What do you guys think about that? Well, yeah, man. It, it's been a great show. We'll see what these Knicks do at 9-0. Are they contenders? Leave some more comments on the Bleacher Report app. Definitely appreciate everybody for tuning in. We will pick things back up next Tuesday, March 14th, same time, same place, 4 p.m. Eastern time on the Bleacher Report app. I appreciate appreciate you guys for tapping in. CP the Franchise signing out, man. Peace.